A former friend who is named Dave told me I'm a horrible influence in his life and on his kids. Now he seems to need my help and a place to stay, so I told him to kick rocks. Well guys, this is a three-part update of one of the craziest stories about this feud between Dave and OP and why Dave should be able to stay at the house of OP. I can't wait to get into this one. My name's Mr. Redito. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and let's get right into it. First, um, this isn't a post where I'm asking if I did the right thing or not. I know I did the right thing. This is a pure rant about this emotional day because if anyone's going to understand, it's you all in the CF community. The gist. A former friend we'll call Dave, who I haven't had any contact with for almost three years, just got in touch with me again. He claims he has a home emergency and needs to find a place for him, wife, and three kids to stay while the home situation gets fixed. This is the same guy who, when I was going through something traumatic, told me he can't be my friend because it'd be a bad influence to his kids being child free. A bit of a background. The reason for the friendship ending is, I was in a high stress situation and very sad. My father was dying and was just one of the terrible things that happened in a span of three months. I was looking for consolation and instead, Dave told me that being a CF woman was a bad influence on their family. Had a wife bless two kids then. In short, they did not want to spend time around me as I wasn't worth it when they have more valuable friends, as they would say. This was someone I've known since graduate school and had spent a lot of time doing fun stuff with, like rock climbing. Dave and I were among a group of mutual buddies that regularly rented out lake houses or winter lodges for summer and winter sport activities. We're talking a decade plus years to just ditch me because he thought I wasn't useful. It hurt a lot, especially when I was dealing with some really sad stuff. Even more so because I was there for him when he found out his mom had cancer, and then was there for him at her funeral. Like I said, I haven't spoke or texted him in almost three years. I chalked it up to people getting really weird when they have kids. That they fall into a traditional conservative mindset that anyone who isn't wanting or working toward it, leave it a beaver, 2.5 kid situation, is somehow suspect. Then today I see a text pop up on my phone from Dave. I never erased or blocked his number from my phone so his name was still in my contacts. And there it was. He asked me to let him and his three kids stay with me at my house because their water heater broke. And it's kind of an emergency situation. He knows I now live in the same city as him and it would be a really big favor and he'd owed me. <sighs> okay, so a lot of emotions with that. Apparently, since he told me I'm a bad influence, him and his wife had a third kid. COVID baby, I guess. My biggest question was, why ask me of all people? I asked Dave why he's asking me to do this for him. His response was basically that he's all out of options and that no one has the room for him and the three kids, especially with his five-month-year-old. I asked him why he can't arrange a hotel room. He said it would be really expensive and they're in a lot of medical debt already from their newest kid having to be in the NICU when he was born. I said that sounds tough, but again, why me? He said he knows I helped out someone last year with emergency housing and saw I had enough extra room for guests. Since I was so generous back then, I could be generous with him now. I knew exactly what he was talking about, but I really wanted to know how he knew. That situation was delicate, and I thought it was a private family matter. He said it was posted on Facebook by the couple I helped. So here's a quick segue. About this time last year, one of my good college friends, Kate, with lupus, got COVID-19. She was being so darn careful... It sucked because this was before the vaccines rolled out first for vulnerable people. She's my age, mid-30s, and very healthy aside from lupus. 
She's a marathon runner, actually. Well, Kate's lupus ended up making COVID even worse, and she ended up going to the ICU. On top of that, she was pregnant, and her husband had to make the decision to save her life over the fetus. Basically, it was either giving life-saving medicine and care to Kate at the expense of her fetus, or she dies. Hopefully, he's a good guy and let the doctors end the pregnancy to save her life. Kate's mother was a jerk and said that her daughter should have died with the baby. She said Kate's life is not worth much anymore and even tried to bring in a priest to try to give her her last rites. By the way, Kate was in a coma at this time. This caused a huge dramatic fallout as you would imagine. Kate's brother and his wife needed a place to stay away from their shit mother immediately. I had an extra room and I'm an easy distance from the hospital. They stayed with me for two days until I locked down a hotel room in one of those long-term residence hotels. Not one was sure Kate was going to make it out alive, so they understandably wanted me nearby. They lived out of state and were staying with the crappy mother while their sister was in the hospital. Thankfully, Kate made it out alive and has since disowned her mom. She actually remembers while being in the coma, people talking about the priest trying to break in. I let the brother and his wife into my home because these people were good people, have always been supportive and still are some of the most gracious people I know. Apparently, unbeknownst to me because I'm not on Facebook, is that either Kate's brother or his wife posted something about how much of a decent person I was to help them out in such a dire moment and need a light during a very dark period of time. They told me as much to my face. I just didn't know that they shared the situation on social media. So, back to the day. Dave saw that stuff last year and kept it all in his head and thought I would let his family and kids into my home with open arms. Frankly, I told him to shove it. I was mad he was trying to guilt me into letting him and his family into my house for an unspecified amount of time. That he knows I'm child-free. Heck, he even said me being child-free is a bad influence on his family. Yet, all of a sudden, when it's convenient for him, I'm magically not a bad influence and he should be able to walk back into my life without even a single apology for the crappy things he said three years prior. I told him being child-free means I don't want kids in my house for an extended period of time. If I did, <laughs> I would have kids. That I was not going to disrupt my life and my two cats to be a bed and breakfast for three children. He said I was selfish and to think of his kids. That there's no hot water in his house. I told him tough poop that he can whip out a credit card or get one of his relatives to cover a hotel stay. He gave me more excuses and brought up their medical debt again and said it'll only be for a few days. I said, uh, multiple days for a broken hot water heater? Sounds extremely suspect. Stuff like that can be fixed relatively quickly. I know residency laws in our state, and if someone stays seven days in someone's home, then they can claim tenant rights. I was not about to risk this turning into a thing where I can't get rid of them. He told me off and then said he'll blast me all over social media and to all my friends that I won't help a family of three in an emergency. That I want little kids to suffer. I told him to play with sand. He hasn't been a friend for years. He doesn't even know my address. All he knows is that I live seemingly close in the same city and that I live alone. He can blast me on social media all he wants. I'm not even on Facebook, so I don't give a single poop what he thinks and gaggle of Karens think of me. I told him social media is not real life. If he does actually share this with me, my actual friends, They'd laugh right in his face. Told him I'll have all his texts for proof of the way he spoke to me and how he's been a big old crap bag. Told him he used to be a decent guy and we had a lot of nice times together. I'm still sorry about his mom and I'm sorry that he went down this path in life since it sounds like he must be miserable. 
but he's a bad influence in my life, so I just can't have him around. I'm sure he'll understand since he said the same thing about me. That was the gist of the last thing I said. He went off, but I blocked him. I'm really sad about it. He really used to be a decent person back 10 years ago, and his mom was a lovely woman. I'm now bracing myself against flying monkeys who may come out of the woodwork and try to guilt me into taking in his family. I can't wait to tell them to take in his family themselves. I've already talked about the situation with my two best friends, and they were both shocked that Dave was so brazen and had no shame. They thought it was suspect that he was so pushy about getting into my home, and for days... One friend said that her water heater broke recently and had a plumber come out the same day. It only took a day for it to be fixed. Being against the hotel idea was a huge red flag to my friends. They're curious what the whole story is and I agreed. It feels like it's missing something. I do feel righteous about all this. I know I did the right thing. I hate that a previous kindness was used as a weapon against me. Years ago, I thought maybe he had a point that I was somehow, quote, not good enough. Because, well, I was pretty depressed. Like, quote, people don't want sad people around. Now with clarity, I see that he had a profoundly bad character. But it did reopen old memories. Sad memories. Anyways, thanks for reading if you made it all this far. Had to get this off my chest <laughs> and vent. Okay, I just want to mention the audacity of this guy. Who in the world expects someone to be able to bring in five people into their home? It doesn't matter if OP is a single person living at the house by themselves. It doesn't matter. We're talking about taking in five whole people and an infant baby. Guys, let me know if you would do the same thing as OP and say, Hey buddy, I'm sorry but you can't stay here. And when things escalate, would you block them or invite them into your home? There's still two updates for this story, and let me tell you, it gets wilder and wilder. So drop your comments down below and let me know what you think's going to happen. If you're new to the channel, I hope you're enjoying the content, and smash that subscribe button. Here comes update number one. Well, I'm happy and a little surprised most things have resolved a little more than 24 hours after they started. I guess this is the benefit of people working on your behalf behind the scenes. Also, want to thank all those who engaged on the last post. I appreciate the support and knew you'd understand my venting. Rest in peace to the inbox, but I did read everything and all of you were the best. Not a single troll, so on to the update. I'm writing this with a pot of hot tea and recommend you do the same. This is going to be long. Well, well, well. All of your guts were right. A broken water heater making a family of five need alternative housing was fishy. Especially since Dave doesn't even have a water heater. It was all a lie. Cue all of you going, oh, I knew it. So here's the deal. Dave sold his house six months ago and him and his wife Shelly had been trying to buy a bigger home ever since. They're right now, as I type this, already in a hotel with their children. They've got plenty of hot water. I can imagine all of you nodding your heads up and down saying, Yep, <laughs> yep, <laughs> I knew you guys wanted an update because the water heater excuse sounded, eh, uh, bullcrap. So here it is. Seriously, get you some hot tea. So my sister is in another time zone and has a few hours on me. She apparently has been working on finding out about Dave. Her husband used to moonlight as a PI in grad school and she has a pre-natural ability of finding details about people. Honestly, she's a little creep in a good way. She also has a social media presence where I do not. I gave her Dave's full name and things I knew about him, like address that I had for him and names of his wife and the kids that I knew. She went to town. She told me that his home went on the market about six months ago and sold pretty quick for a ton more than what it bought for years ago. It's a seller's market and it was a huge sell. 
I was like, oh, that's interesting. So then went to say that she looked around in the city and surrounding cities and could not find him buying any other property. It looked like his house sold for money, but that's it. So I then texted my two friends from yesterday. I told them what my sister found, that it looks like Dave sold his house and doesn't actually have a water heater problem because, quote, he doesn't have a water heater. <laughs> my friends were like, WTF. So, one of my two friends, Allison, got in touch with my sister and they went on social media deep dive. My sister was very worried I was being conned. Allison was a grad schoolmate along with me and Dave 10 years ago. She was never super close with him and he wasn't on her radar, but she was among his Facebook friends. I guess thanks goes out to people of Facebook friending literally everybody they even slightly know. At about the same time, I heard back from Kate's brother and sister-in-law, who stayed with me back when Kate was in the hospital. It was Kate's sister-in-law, Laura, who posted about being thankful about my generosity on Facebook. She confirmed she had posted a couple pictures. They were of my cat, who was looking like he was laying down on the house rules. And one of my big plants, a Monstera Deliciosa. Well, because she loves them thing was that you could extrapolate things about the home, tidy, and large kitchen, nice pantry. This will be relevant later. I filled her in about what she was going on, and she was mortified that she might have been partly at fault for why Dave wanted to get into my house. She took down the post, untagged my name, and showed me a screen capture verifying she did so, and asked if she can help with anything else. I told her my sister's apparently doing a deep dive, and maybe she could use some help. I put Laura in contact with my sister. Laura apparently also got in contact with Allison. Seemingly random and late in the morning, I was asked by Allison for screen grabs of the precise point in the text conversation where Dave says his emergency is about the water heater. And it's why he needs me to do him a favor and take in his family and kids for a few days. I gave it to her and it was radio silence for almost a day. I thought, huh, I wonder what's going on. So in the early evening, I got a lot more of the story. I got texts from my sister, Allison, and Laura. I'm going to try and bullet point, but it's a bit circuitous. Dave and his wife, Shelly, did sell their house six months ago. They wanted more room and bedrooms for their now three kids and wanted to upgrade. It's being a huge and wild seller's market and their home was estimated to have accrued high six figures in equity since they bought it. They were excited to throw it on the market. Dave and wife wanted to get top dollar for the house so they sold it without a contingency. That first need to buy a home before the seller could move in and officially take the house. Dave was convinced with a huge sale that they could get another house quickly. Well, their house was sold fast and there was a bidding war. Dave bragged about the war. Him and Shelly went about trying to buy another home except it wasn't easy at all. All the homes they put a bid in went into someone else who outbid them. Time came for the new sellers to take over the house and they had to move out. Dave and Shelly did not think this was a big deal. A friend of theirs took them in with the understanding that it would just be temporary and they would be actively buying a house, to which Dave and Shelly were trying. But they were still being outbid. They refused to lower expectations or adjust their budget. They would not look at homes that were the same size as their old one because the whole reason for selling was to get a bigger house. They could not win in any of the bidding wars. Dave refused to increase the budget. Indeed, their third kid was born premature and was in the NICU, so they actually do have medical debt. He doesn't want to spend anything more or take out more loans. So Dave, Shelly, and the three kids go to someone else's place to stay. They continue to look for homes and cannot get one. This repeats now to a third person's home. 
At this point, people are trying to tell him that maybe it's a good option to wait out the housing bubble when it's not such a seller's market and just get an apartment in the meantime. Dave shoots this down because an apartment costs money, akin to a mortgage. If he's going to pay for living accommodations per month, that it better be a mortgage. He thinks paying for an apartment is a money drain. Shelly is even more angry at the suggestion. She doesn't want to be in an apartment that will be smaller than their old home. Dave's family seems to be overstaying their welcome. People are getting annoyed. Dave and Shelly are not willing to chip in for groceries. Dave's family is now on their fourth place of people willing to take them in. A month ago is when they ran out of options for free housing. Hilariously, they were all run out of people because they needed the room for their own family coming for the holidays. No one wants to take freeloaders in anymore. Shelly is a school teacher in the city and because of that, and the kids are back in school, they really need to stay in the city. But their only options now for free housing is Dave's brother who lives about two hours away and Shelly's parents who live six hours away. Neither option's good for Dave and Shelly's job or their kids getting to in-person classes. So, Dave and family needed house ASAP and booked the hotel. They're really upset about it because their kids are loud, and the hotel staff is harping on them to be quieter. Dave and Shelly complain how they hate living out of a hotel. How it's unfair they can't get a house with all the money they have. To be clear, they have more than enough money to skate on living in a hotel, which is still way pricier than renting an apartment. Dave likes the idea of hotel because it's not signing a lease. They can leave any time and they have maid service. Shelly goes, Aw, poor me! Because she says that the kids are so sad they don't have a backyard to play in. How being in a hotel does not let kids be kids. So, here's a slight segue. Allison goes back in Shelly's post and finds a situation in which she and Gaggle of her friends are talking not so nicely about me. It's a situation that happened at the start of the pandemic. It was back when people freaking out and started buying out all the toilet paper. People also bought a lot of food stuff before it could be restocked because of panic buying. A person I used to go to grad school was, was friends with, got in touch with me to ask how I was holding up. I thought she was contacting me to offer support and be nice. Her motivation was to get me to give her my food. I had a chest freezer in a wall-stocked pantry for a long time. Having a walking pantry is something that got passed on to me from my ama, aka my grandma, who survived World War II. My mom did it and now I do it too. Well, this friend who was seemingly sweet to me knows I have a decent amount of food. She said she needs me to give her some of my food because I don't have any kids to feed. She said her kid is a picky eater and I probably have a bunch of frozen chicken to spare. I was impressed by the audacity and told her that if she was desperate for food that there's a food bank she can go to. I'm not going to just give her my food because quote, her son's a picky eater and only eats her homemade chicken nuggets. It's not a food shortage, it's panic buying. If she just gets to the grocery store early in the morning or midweek, when they typically restock, she'll easily get chicken. She told me I'm selfish. Apparently, she took this to social media to talk behind my back with others, who were spouses of grad school friends. Anyways, back to Shelly's post. Shelly supports the woman who tried to get me to give her my frozen chicken. Shelly also considers me selfish for not helping a mother out. She says it's really weird for me to keep so much food around when it's just me. That <laughs> I obviously have problems. If you guessed the quote, you're a bad influence, must have been a bad seed planted by Dave's wife. I think you're correct. When Laura posted about my generosity of them staying a couple days before they found a long-term hotel situation while Kate was hospitalized, there were some comments made by Shelly how nice it was for me to do that. Sweet as can be, 
and that my home looked amazing. This web of friendship is seemingly complex, but basically, it's a lot of people who know each other from grad school. Grad school was tough, and we all let off steam by organizing vacations before most of us were married or had kids. I always invited my close college friends who stayed in the state to the group vacations where we'd all pitch in and rent out a lake house or a cabin or a ski resort. Anyways, recent post says Shelly going all, poor me, because she says that the kids are so sad they don't have a backyard to play in. How being in a hotel doesn't let the kids be kids. Then there's this weird Shelly post two days ago. That sounds like her family has found a place that's, quote, so cute, and her kids will be able to get out of this hotel nightmare. She says it has a great kitchen for her kids. Q Dave texting me yesterday asking me, after no contact for three years, that he has a broken water heater and needs me to take in his family for a few days while it gets fixed. Obviously, you all know I told him no. Well, well, well. My friends see that Dave and Shelly have made some passive-aggressive comments on social media this morning. How society's terrible nowadays when friends go against their offer of helping families with kids of a tough situation. Shelly says her cute home situation fell through. She gets a bunch of sympathy from the Karen friends in her comments. She says her kids are so disappointed. I think this is probably when Allison asked for my screenshots of Dave's water heater sob story. Allison goes on a tear and posts shares of the screen grabs of Dave's water heater lie. She and Laura start calling them out. They share the truth that Dave and Shelly did not have a new housing situation lined up. They were trying to get into my home by lying about a broken water heater. That I've never agreed to having them stay here. Laura called them huge a-holes for trying to take advantage of me. Allison went rip-crap about the situation from three years ago. My real friends like Allison were very much there for me while people like Dave were like, Yeah, I don't care, plus you're a bad influence on my family. Allison let everyone know about Dave calling me a bad influence on his family for my child-free lifestyle and how he's pathetic thinking he can walk back into someone's life who he just insulted. Allison's also child-free herself. People told off Dave for being super mean and now wanting favors. It apparently snowballed into people calling him super cheap and a leech. The people who let his family stay with him during the last six months came out of the woodwork to lay into him. One person described how dirty Dave's family was and how it was insane how much extra cleaning they had to do. That his kids have no manners. They terrorized their dogs and it was awesome when they finally left. People expressed anger that they were trying to pull one on me and then try to make me out to be the bad guy on social media. They were people I hadn't talked to in a long time who told him that I was a good person how I helped them in grad school for random things and did not deserve this. It was really nice to hear. Some related how I've helped people get jobs, something more than Dave's ever done. I'm very involved in the grad school networking community, and I like sharing job opportunities and wisdom about finding scientific jobs and mentoring. Dave's own brother said he was disgusted by this behavior. He remembered how much I helped when their mom passed away. He said their mom would be rolling in their grave if she knew how he was treating people. My sister ended up getting me to Zoom with her and screen shared her monitor to show me what the hoopla looked like. Maybe this is why I never actually got a single message from anyone about not letting a family into my home. I was expecting flying monkeys. <laughs> I never got them. Dave told me he was going to quote put me on blast on Facebook ends up getting blasted himself. How stupid. How incredibly stupid. I had the text of him lying about the gosh darn water heater. He must have thought since I wasn't on social media that I'd never be able to tell others he was lying about it, or now that he was currently enjoying hot hotel water. I feel like I dodged a nuclear-tipped missile. 
I had to pour myself a drink after work and really think about all this. After thinking about it and considering all the context, I believe Dave and Shelly were going to try and squat in my house. He did go off when I mentioned the seven-day rule when people get tenant rights in our state. I knew it was fishy. You guys called it, by the way. I'm thinking he was a cheap jerk who did not want to pay any more for a hotel. He still did not want to find an apartment and he had exhausted all in-city free housing opportunities with his friends. I was a last-ditch effort. His wife peripherally knew I was an amenable to guest. She also knew my home was nice and that I had a ton of food for her kids to eat. They had a reputation already for eating people out of the house and their home. If they stayed with me for a week, they'd be quote tenants and I'd have to spend time kicking them out. With the courts as they are, it probably would have taken months to evict them. Much easier to run a scam on a single person and push them out of their own home than try to do the same thing with quote his real friends who have already had kids and not a lot of ample space. He was only looking for free housing so he'd be able to put every penny he had into his goal of buying a four-plus bedroom house with all the money he got in the sale of his old home. I don't know for certain, but it does make sense. So, I decided to send him one last text. I unblocked him and sent him this before reblocking him. Hey Dave, so I found out you were lying about the water heater. You don't even have a water heater, you're living at a hotel, along with sitting on a huge pile of cash from selling your old home. I think it's real crappy of you for lying to me and trying to get me into my home to leech off of me. Especially because you destroyed our friendship when you called me a bad influence on your family. I did not tell you back then, but I'm telling you now. You are trash. Your mom would be ashamed of you. It's all the projection because you're a bad influence. Not only on my life, but on the lives of others. If you really believed, quote, I was a bad influence, you never would have ever tried to get your family into my home this week. But if you still think I'm some sort of bad influence, then you won't have to worry about me helping you out or granting any sort of favor in the future. I'm going to keep my, quote, bad influence far away from your family. Oh, and Shelly sounds like she's become a real treat. The last thing I'll do for you because I'm not a monster is say that you need to do your duty as a husband and father and pay to get a stable apartment for your family. Stop playing these freeloader games. Here's a link to a local Craigslist housing page. I'm sure you'll find something. Oh, and hope to see you at the next non-Zoom alumni event. I'm sure it'll be great to catch up in person. <laughs> so guys, it's done. I said my piece and once again, you were all right about something else going on. I feel really sick right now how someone could think about doing this to me. Also feeling kind of sick thinking about the idea of letting them into my home. That would have been a nightmare. The sheer size of the bullet that OP dodged in this update is insane. I think the craziest part that I read in this story was the fact that when these lunatics would stay with other people, they would not clean up after themselves or purchase their own groceries. How can you just go stay with someone knowing you have five kids and literally eat everything in someone's house that's not even yours. This was like reading a movie off a script, seriously. And guys, just when you thought it was all over, there's still one update. Please drop your comments down below and share your opinion on this story. Have you ever invited someone into your home and, well, they took advantage of your generosity? If you've had a similar story, I'd love to read it. Okay, guys. Let's hop into the final update right now. I thought many of you would like to hear this small update. I hosted a small CF Friendsgiving and some people who have social media posted pictures of the food spreading on social media Facebook. My Friendsgiving was for people who weren't able to see their family for Thanksgiving, don't have family, or don't like their own family. 
There was merriment, music, cats in laps, cards against humanity, and food babies. On someone's post of the spread, I was told that Dave came into the thread and wrote how upset he was. Why was he upset? Because I let people into my home but could not let his family into my home. Cue the eye rolling that would qualify as cardio training. He tried to say I was a bad person for renegotiating or hosting his family in my home and they're still stuck in their hotel situation. How his three kids are unhappy and don't quote have a real home or be in for the holidays. This guy. So I was told people chimed in and put him in a place in various ways. I never offered or allowed them into my home. He used a big lie about a broken water heater to get access. His kids were not stuck in a hotel room for Thanksgiving. He posted pictures of them at his wife's parents' place where they all went. Someone brought up that he'd been insulting me for years behind my back. And why would someone who was the target of his insults want him in their house? Apparently, he's still going on to anyone who hears his screaming in the void. How I was a terrible person not taking in his family during, quote, their time of need. His wife's calling me a stupid jerk who doesn't know what it means to be a mother. How if I was a mother, I would be a better person. She hates I have a home to myself and how having a friend's giving and letting other people into my home is just increasing the pain that I've caused them. Both Dave and her think I had a friend's giving on purpose despite them, and rub it in their faces that I have my own cozy home during the holidays. Yes, this is exactly the kind of stuff that gets you invited into people's homes. <laughs> you know how people love to hear their stupid jerks. The whole water heater lie situation was discussed on Friendsgiving. Some people saw some of the social media fallout and were like, uh, what's going on? Everyone has been like, what the duck is wrong with Dave? The consensus is that Dave can't handle being told no. He's a 39-year-old guy who just was able to get his own way. He found a wife who's like him and it's made him worse. Personality-wise. It's not necessarily the house situation, it's more that he was called out. He's deflecting his own embarrassment and doubling down refuses to acknowledge he lied and tried to manipulate someone. I also just learned the verb Vogue Booking. He's using his social media to vague book about child-free people being terrible people and how, quote, they hate kids and want them to suffer during the holidays. Apparently, he's still refusing to just get a gosh darn apartment with his pile of cash from his house sale. Friends have said people are telling him to cut the crap and focus on his family, rather than spend the energy complaining about the mess he got himself into by lying. He's just spamming their posts with tales of woe. My petty side wants to unblock him and issue another text, telling him that this is harassment of me over social media, and it's gone unnoticed by many people. I don't know whether I need to tell him to cut the crap out or I'm going to have to pursue some sort of harassment lawsuit. Frankly, I have no idea about the law regarding this and if it meets the standards of slander or something else. My berry glazed turkey must have looked pretty darn good to set Dave off like that over an overheating water heater.